Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Lunar Vim. So Lunar Vim is not really a completely new editor. It is basically Neo Vim with an IDE layer, meaning that you are going to get a lot of auto completion features, linting. Neo Vim by default don't have all of these things. So it's better to use a distribution like Lunar Vim, NVChad, or any other editors that you want to use based on Neo Vim. One example is Lunar Vim. I'm going to be talking about why I'm using Lunar Vim. So let's get started. So in order to install Lunar Vim, all you have to do is go down a little bit until you see the Linux command in order to install Lunar Vim. So all you have to do is copy this, go into your terminal, make sure you inside of your bash shell and paste this command. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again. But if you want to install it, that's the way to do. Now if you are on uh, Windows, uh, go down a little bit, you can see we have Windows, PowerShell, PowerShell 7 Plus. So you need a version of PowerShell that is 7 Plus. Uh, all you have to do is copy this command for Windows users and then paste it inside of PowerShell. I guess you have to get administrative privileges. But I'm on Linux so I will install it on Win. Uh, for Mac OS users as well, just go ahead and paste this because bash and curl or stand post 6 commands. And you can simply go ahead and install it. It's going to may ask uh, to install Node.js dependencies, Rust, and Python dependencies. So make sure you have those installed. And then one other requirement is that you need to have NeoVim 0.7 plus, which is now it is 0.8 dev. 0.7 plus is, I guess, the stable version for now. So I'm going to open up a simple file. I'm going to do uh, projects cpp files and let me open up main.cpp so I'm, I'm going to quickly write some c++ code i'm going to do a control w and as you can see we have formatting as well i'm going to simply do c out and do a return zero so this is uh, c++ and as you can see if i do um, as painful we can see that the detected file is cpp which is just the extension for C++ files and we have CLMD which I guess is what is used in order to show all of those errors or uh, give auto completion and then format it when you save it. Now I've used other editors like NVChat so if I go into NVChat it looks really good uh, as you can see the photos itself they look really great. The problem with that is that I don't really get like uh, if I go into here you can see we are able to get automatic LSP support. We are also getting linting, we are getting formatting. All of that are enabled by default. Let me open up the configuration file for Lunar Vim. So it's a Lua file, so all you have to do is make sure you know a little bit about Lua so that you can configure it a little bit easily. So this is my config. I configured it a little bit. I have the uh, link for this configuration file in the description down below. I have my github dot files. So instead of that, all you have to do is go into dot config slash elvim and here you should be able to find config dot lua. So I added two plugins. One is if I go into here, this is uh, the one I'm using for buffer lines and this one is for indentation lines. So when I do something like this, and do something like this as you can see I'm getting these black kind of lines these are just indentation lines that I'm getting just to make it look a, a bit good and I'm not really sure what this one is but yeah so the main advantage of Luna Vim of using Luna Vim is that you're able to get formatters and formatters that setup has bunch of formatters we have black ISO so I think those are the dependencies that are installed by default uh, now I'm using Prettier D which is an alternative to Prettier so I'm able to format CSS and HTML files It's working fine so I think there's no real problem And black and ISORT Style is installed by default It is a uh, Rust dependency It is for Lua if you want to format Lua files Then you can, for example, I'm going to show an example As you can see this is misplaced If I do colon W to save we can see that it auto formats. Not only small line, I can do 
big chunk of code into a cold W. It's not going to do any kind of delay and simply it just formats it as expected. My old configs though, I have to configure it a lot to get that same fastness. That's what people want because they don't want slow auto formatting. If there is slow auto formatting which takes about a second or two, it's uh, useless to use an editor. It's better to have a key binding to format if you face that slowness. I'm not really seeing that. The other thing is these prefixes. So these are some prefixes that I've added. So by default, LunarWim, in order to change any kind of settings for a plugin, what you have to do is, let me show an example. So this is toggle term, I'll change some settings. In order to change it, is do Elvin dot, and then you do built-in dot, and whatever plugin that you want to configure. So in this case, it is terminal, which is actually toggle term. And if we do dot, and you can see we have all of this. Yeah, so as you can see, those are all of the settings that you can access using that particular line. Instead of typing in elven.builtin.terminal every single time, I just simply prefixed it with uh, this one. So terminal underscore prefix is just same as writing elven.builtin.terminal. I, I did the same thing for Neo Trim, Neo Trim tree, and uh, this key binding prefix to change key bindings. Now, the problem that you might face is that how to change key bindings because by default, this is a bit confusing. You can see in order to change key bindings, I have to do lvim.keys.normal mode and then put these square brackets. Inside of that, I have to put whatever key I want to trigger. For example, if I want to launch telescope, I do control F and it's going to take a second to load all the files. So as you can see, Control F is for telescope. Uh, by default, the key binding in order to open up Neo M3 is space E, which actually works as well. I generally use Control B. So what I have to do is do Elvin keys dot mode. The key binding prefix is just assigned to this one. So it's same as typing in key bind underscore prefix, and then instead of the square brackets, you put the key that you want, and here is the command that you have to toggle. Now in order to see all of the key bindings, you can do leader lk the leader key is a space key so if you hit the space you can see all of this you can do l capital l and hit k and you can see we can we are able to see all of the key bindings if you want to see something like your um let's see so for example uh, so nvm3 toggle it's a bit harder to find these key bindings it's not really that good of an experience but as you can see we are able to get all of the key bindings and we have some LSP key bindings as well. For example, we have uh, GB, GC. GC is to comment out uh, lines. If you want to see that video, make sure you look at my uh, video where I configured NeoVim to make it work with Lua as well as LSP. So that is my uh, configuration file. NVChat, it doesn't provide all of that. So if I go down a little bit, it's more like an UI design. So if you want a good design for NeoVim, I guess NVChat should work for you. But the thing is that it doesn't work really well out of the box with formatters, linting. So that is a problem with LVim, oh, sorry, NVChat. You can install it uh, from here as well. Um, and the other thing is the documentation. I am not really sure whether I talked about this or not. If you want some documentation, all you have to do is go into uh, installation so go into installation first of all and it recommends some of these programs make sure you have git make pip npm node and cargo install these are for git is for cloning make is to uh, run the make file pip is an uh, python installer python module installer save for npm node is required to make sure npm works correctly and cargo is for the runs uh, so in order to install it, as you can see, we have the stable version, the rolling version. Uh, the stable version is uh, is more like it's not going to get updates every single day. The rolling version gets updates every single day. And we have all of that. We have tips for WSL2, uh, which is for Windows users. And if I go down a little bit, you can uninstall it by just doing these commands. Uh, if you go into quick start, here's where you have to do add lvim to path so in order to launch lvim from your menu what you have to do is type in 
LVM, as you can see, it works pretty well because LVM is automatically added to dot local slash bin. That is where all of your binaries are located. Slash user slash bin is also where all of your bin system wide binaries are located. So you can install language servers. That's how you can do it. You do LSP install. And if you want to install for uh, Lua, you do Lua. By default, the first one is installed. That's why you're getting all of that. So if I make an error, as you can see, I'm getting an unexpected expression. If I do something like that, I'm able to see some warnings as well. So that is all about uh, Lunar Vim. And my experience is that it's pretty good. It took me a little bit of time to uh, guess all of these things because it's a little bit harder the documentation i did not really uh, look at the documentation so it's a little bit harder but i would recommend you to look at the documentation because it's really really helpful you can go into configuration and then copy the sample file if you want to you know tweak all of the languages so these uh, something like lua all you have to do is go into languages and it's going to show you all of that and it's going to show you how to install any kind of server so you can do lsp and your language server you can scroll through all of that if you don't want auto formatting and save you can do lvim.format on save and you can make this false i generally keep it to true so that i get auto formatting on save and i did not really talk about plugins by the way i guess i actually talked about them but yeah you can add your plugins not really the core plugins like the lsp and the tree sitter plugins what plugins you have to add is just some uh, utilities, UI plugins. Some UI plugins are already installed, like these notifications. So they, as you can see, these are some pop-ups. Those are installed by default, so you don't have to install it again. If you install the same plugin that's already installed, you're going to get an error saying that it is installed two times. So you can just remove it if you want to. You can install some uh, color schemes as well. And then you can hit space sp to go through all of the color schemes i guess the one darker which is the default team looks good the other they don't really look that good to be honest they look yeah they don't really look that good so stick with the default team which is one darker it looks so much better yeah so that's all for this video if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel make sure you comment down below for the next one and i'm going to see you in the next video changes.